So what can Microbit do with Scratch? It has a bunch of features, but not all are made equal when it comes to Scratch. Well stick around, because in this Scratch Microbit tutorial, we'll go through the buttons, the LEDs, the pins, and the accelerometer through each code block in the project editor. All this, coming your way. Hello world, Surfing Scratcher here, teacher, surfer, programmer, bringing you the goodness of learning to code through video tutorials. If that sounds like something that you're into, consider hitting that subscribe button. Hit the show more button down below to check out a bunch of links that relate to this video. If you don't yet have a micro bit, you can show your support for this channel by getting yours through using the link in the description below. But hey, let's go suss out those micro bit blocks. Here we are in the Scratch Project Editor. You can see our microbit is connected. We've got our microbit category selected and all of our blocks here to explore. I've made this Scratch microbit simulator, which isn't perfect, but it'll do the job to simulate some of these blocks in action here on the screen. I'm also going to be recording an actual microbit alongside it. Let's go check out the first block of the microbit blocks category, and that's this event hat block here. So this event hat block refers to the button presses. We can do something when the A button is pressed, we can do something when the B button is pressed. We can also do something when either of those buttons are pressed. But note, we do not have an option for when both buttons are pressed. Okay, let's do something on these button presses. I'm gonna go get this stack block here, this display text stack block. And what that will do is it will illuminate this text by the LEDs of the micro bit. So if we connect it on an A button press, let's display the text A. And on a B button press, let's display the text B. Okay, I've got the micro bit here and we're just gonna press the A button and you can see the A has illuminated. Now I'm gonna press the B button and the B button has now illuminated. I mentioned before that there is no when A and B is pressed at the same time. But we can easily simulate that using these Boolean blocks here. So we can get this Boolean block of when the A button is pressed and we can also get the Boolean block of when the B button is pressed. And what we can do is wrap that inside an operator and boolean block. So if we go when A is pressed and when B is pressed, then we'll do some stuff. So let's stick that inside of our if statement and then we can display the text both. Okay, I've got the micro bit here. I'm just gonna press both buttons at the same time. And there we go. We've got the text cycling through saying both. All right, let's check out the next event hat block and that's when either moved, shaken and jumped. And this all relates to that accelerometer or the motion sensor of the micro bit. So the first block here is when moved. It's basically just when the micro bit is handled. I'll show you that by attaching this display block here. So when the micro bit is moved, we will display this image. Okay, I'm just gonna go and reach for the micro bit here and you'll see as soon as I touch it, it illuminates into that shape. Okay, so let's check out the next event, and that is when shaken. We're gonna display all the LEDs when we shake it. I'm just gonna head across over into the micro bit now. Here we are. Now you have to give it quite a vigorous shake for this to work. Here we go, there they all are. The next event is the when jumped event. Now that is when the micro bit goes up and then it goes down. Let's jump across the micro bit to see that in action. Okay, micro bit goes up and then down. There we go. Okay, let's look a little bit more at this display stack block. So if you click on the drop down menu, you'll see here that you've got access to these LEDs. You can press the all blank ones to reset it, and you can press the white ones to illuminate them all. Depends on which way you like starting from. I like starting with a blank slate. What we're gonna do now is display four images to represent all the tilts. I'm gonna show an arrow. You can click and hold these down to just illuminate them. Like this, duplicate. Okay, so we've got our four arrow directions here, which is awesome. And that's gonna really help us to understand the tilt. So let's look at the next block here, and that is when the micro bit is tilted. Now, if you go to the drop down menu here, you've got front, back, left, right, and any tilt. So any tilt is almost like that move hat block. So when we tilt to the front, let's signify that by using the front arrow. When we tilt to the back, let's signify that with the down arrow here. When we tilt to the left, let's go left. And when we go right, let's look at the right arrow here. I'll just clean all this up. Okay, let's go check this out on the micro bit. I have it in my hand. I'm gonna tilt it towards me and the arrow changes towards me. I'm going to tilt it to my right, to my left, and now forward. This works best when the micro bit is parallel to a surface, not when it is perpendicular like it is now. You can also use the Boolean equivalents of these when tilted events. We also have these reporter blocks for our tilt angles. We can check out the front, the back, the left, and the right values. Now, if we look over here on the stage, I've got that represented in these variables here. So I'm just gonna go back across to the micro bit 
And as I move the mic a bit, you can see those values are updating, which is pretty neat. Our arrow of the mic a bit is not updating because I just got rid of those blocks. I've skipped over one of the blocks and that's clear display. I hope it's pretty clear what that one does. That will just clear all the LEDs. Watch when it happens when I press it. All right, so let's check out the final hat block and that is when the pins are connected. So we can detect when the zero pin, the one pin or the two pin has been connected and we'll be using the ground pin to complete the circuit. To demonstrate this, I've got a jumper cable that I'll be using and let's connect up all the pins. So what I need to do here is I need to use my jumper cable to touch the ground pin and when I'm touching the ground pin I can also touch the zero pin and it will illuminate to zero. I can use it to touch the one pin and I can use it to touch the two pin. Never use the three volt and the ground together. I've got a link down below in the description that explains these pins in more detail. To round off this tutorial, I want to talk a little bit more about these LEDs and specifically this display stack block. So you'll see that this stack block here has a space for a reporter block. And that's cool because what we can do is we can go in and pass it a list. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, an LED light is either on or it's off. So it can be a zero or a one. That's how this works. So we can go and create a list of 25 slots that refer to each of these LEDs and we can turn it on and we can turn it off. I've gone ahead and created a list variable to show this. I've got the LEDs list here on the screen and I've also got the LEDs reporter block. If you click it, you'll see that it's just got all those numbers in a long line, all those zeros. I can drag that inside of the display. I can go in and I can change the first space to a one. And when I do that, it turns on, which is amazing. Now in this simulator, what I've got ahead and done is I've made all these LEDs clickable. So you can go in and you can turn these on and off and you can watch all the LEDs update through here. Why might this be useful? You might be asking. We can also export our list and that means that we can store the drawing. And if we ever want to upload the drawing again, we can do that through an import. Here, I'm going to get the scissors that I created earlier. I'm going to open that and there is my scissors display. What I've gone ahead and done is wrap that display LED block inside a forever block when the green flag is clicked. So if we go in and upload that scissors image, you'll see that we've got the mic bit on the screen now and we open it, we've got the scissors right there. So what you can go ahead and do, you can go and create all these different lists with these 25 values and you can have these predefined images that you could reuse throughout your project. Just a word of caution, if you explicitly do this and overwrite the display block, you'll never be able to display text. This simulator doesn't handle text. Perhaps I can leave that as a challenge for you to remix this simulator and make it handle text. Drop me a comment down below if you'd be interested for me to create a video on how I created this simulator. It's time for a scratchy question. And I wanna know, do you have any outrageous or crazy ideas to use Scratch and Microbit together? Share yours in the comment section below. We might even start a collaboration. Hey, thanks for checking out this Scratch Microbit tutorial. Like, subscribe, ring the bell if you're new around here and have a scout of some other content on your screen right now. Show your support for Surfing Scratcher by checking out exclusive content on my Patreon page, my funky red bubble tees, or by joining the mailing list. All links below in the description. But until then, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.